Welcome to this LT Spice video tutorial. In the last video, I showed how to create a new schematic from scratch. We're going to continue and now use this schematic that we created to run a transient simulation. So the two things that you need to do for a transient simulation is, um, first of all, you're going to need some sort of um, source, and then you're going to need the transient um, simulation directive. So to get the source set up, this, is, this voltage is going to be our our signal source. So we're going to right click on the voltage source. And you're going to get this fairly simple um, dialog here. And we want to go into the advanced portion. And so in the in the, in the advanced, you'll have the, the simple things that were in the previous view, but you'll also have this more advanced view. And so if you wanted to just do like a, a simple DC measurement, you'd put in a DC value here, and then we'll review these um, the AC later. For right now, we're going to do a transient. And so um, just to make it an interesting transient simulation, we're going to make this a pulse input. Um, so for a pulse, it's going to you're going to need to put what's the you know, what's the starting voltage, this initial voltage? Um, what's it going to be um, after it's, you know, at the end of its pulse? Um, so I'm going to say we're going to start with a zero volt. We're going to go to a five volt. And then there's this delay of how long does it take to go from zero to five? I'm going to put 10 milliseconds. Um, what's the rise and the fall time? I'm just going to put one microsecond. Um, this is something where you you want to put something um, somewhat realistic. Um, but but in my case, I want to make some pretty sharp square waves. And then here, I just want to make it, yeah, like a square wave where it's um, it's going to be on the same time as it is off. So I'm going to say 10 milliseconds on. And then um, because I want it to be, you know, evenly on and off, I'm going to make it 20 millisecond period. I'm going to leave the cycles blank, which means that I just want that to kind of continue on forever. Um, if you wanted to only, you know, have that go for a number, you know, a certain number of cycles, you could put that here. I'm also going to keep this checkbox on where I say this information will be visible on the schematic. And so now you're going to see the, the information about your source here. I'm going to move it. So I'm going to use this move um, button here. Click that. And I'm going to move this over just so it's a little easier to read. In fact, I'm going to use my mouse wheel um, to zoom this out a little bit as I bring this out. Let's see. I don't know. Maybe I'll just put it here. Here, and then I will use space to zoom back in. So now I've got my um, voltage set up. And the next thing I need to do is I need to add the um, analysis directive. So you've got lots of choices here, which again I will I will go over in other videos. But for now, we're just going to do a transient simulation. So you remember I've got a pulse that's got a 20 millisecond period. So I'm going to run this for let's say 60 milliseconds that'll capture three of those pulses. Um, the rest of this I'm not going to bother with right now. We're just going to start out simple. And I'll just put this transient um, somewhere where we can see it there. So now we've got what we need to run our transient simulation. And I'm going to hit the this little play button to run my transient. At this point, if I had any sort of errors in my circuit, it will tell me. Hopefully I've done everything correctly. Um, it looks like I did. So I ran my simulation and now I've got this blank waveform window over here. Um, at this point, you can rearrange if you want. Um, you can move things around. You can stack um, horizontally or vertically. Um, so now at this point, if you want to plot something, one way you can do it is you can just click on the net that you want to plot. So here, you're going to see the, the voltage probe comes up. And so I could click right here on this net, and it's going to plot um, the voltage at that node right there. And so you can see it's my it's my pulse like I was expecting. So if we go and we look at the, I right clicked on the voltage, and you can see how I specified the, the pulse. And so that's what we're showing here. So that's one thing you can do to just kind of double check and make sure that it's doing what you think it's doing. And so then I can also probe the output. And I can see that my my little RC circuit here is doing what I would expect. Um, I'm seeing an exponential um, settling right here. 
as it's, you know, responding to the input pulse. Um, let's see, something else we can do is we could plot current. So the way you would plot current is you could actually click over um, a component. You can see, and it will show you what the direction of the current is that it's going to plot. So let's say for here, I could plot this, um, the current through the capacitor. So at first it's going to plot it in the same pane and you're going to get this secondary axis, which is going to show the current. I'm actually going to add a plot plane. So if I right click on the waveform, you'll get add plot plane, sorry, add plot pane below. And then I'm going to drag. So if I just drag on the name here, this IC one, and I can drag it down to this other plot plane. Um, so that's, you know, a way that you can um, organize things based on what you're wanting to look at. I can also plot the current. So if I come back and I click on the schematic window again, and I can plot the current in the resistor. Now, one thing you'll notice is, you know, so we've got this circuit where the current in the capacitor should be the same as the current in the resistor. And it is, but it's opposite. Um, and that's because SPICE has a concept of, you know, direction of, of the way these components have been placed. And so this resistor is um, placed, you know, in somewhat of an opposite polarity from the capacitor. You can actually look at this in the raw net list. You know, so if you take the schematic and you convert it to a net list, which you would click on the view up here at the top, you're going to click view and then you're going to say spice net list. And so here you can actually see kind of look under the hood of what the circuit looks like to LT spice. And so you can see that um, the R1, the, the directionality is from the output node or you know this net that we called out um, so that's pin one for this resistor and then in is pin two um, so the current is going from out to in and then the capacitor you can see the current is going from out to ground which is what this zero node is so if you're ever troubleshooting your circuit and trying to understand what you're looking at viewing the net list is one way you could do that um, so if you are picky about this and you it matters to you on your waveform that the currents are the way you expect them, um, something you can do here is you can rotate this resistor. So I could move it. So again, I could either move by clicking the move icon or I could do the hotkey. I'll click M for move. So I'm going to move this resistor out. And then I'm going to, I could either rotate it 180 degrees or I could flip it. So you can see here, there's the rotate or the mirror, I'm gonna click mirror and put it down that way. And so now I'm gonna stick it back in my circuit. And then so far nothing's changed because I need to rerun the simulation. So if I rerun, now you'll see, um, and maybe it's hard to see because they're overlaying each other. So I can click on the current in C1 and then I can click on the current in R1. You can see that they're the same. Another way I could sort of prove this out is I could add another plot plane and then just show you. So um, so that is just something to be aware of that there is, um, you know, sort of a directionality of, of currents and if that matters to you. Um, let's see. So one last thing to show is that you can zoom in, um, you know, so just like we could zoom in over here, you know, various ways on the um, schematic, you can also zoom in over here. So one way to zoom in is just to click in the waveform and you can just click and hold and you can see I've got this, you know, zoom icon here. And so we could zoom in to the waveform like that. Um, similarly to the schematic view, you can also hit space to zoom to fit. Um, and then a quick measurement, like if you wanted to just do a really quick measurement on something, you can actually use that zoom feature to do that. So let's say I wanted to measure, I don't know, I'll just measure like the period of my waveform just to double check and make sure I set that up right. So you can um, you can use your zoom feature, but don't let, let it go. Um, and if you look at the lower left, you'll see what the, um, the X distance and the, and the Y distances from the corners of your zoom. And so you can use that to make a measurement 
um, just really quickly. There are other ways to make measurements, but this is just sort of the, the quickest way to do it and, and easy for me to show you since I'm already showing you Zoom. Um, so next we'll talk about AC simulation and some other ways to make measurements.